Back in 2001, Jaguar introduced their first high-volume, entry-level, compact luxury car, the X-Type, to compete against cars such as the BMW 3 Series, Mercedes C-Class, and Audi A4. Born out of Jaguar's acquisition by Ford, the X-Type was a heavily re-engineered version of Ford of Europe's recently released Mondeo Mark III. Ford had hoped they could sell at least 100,000 annually, but many Jaguar purists derided it for not being a true Jaguar while others were disappointed in its small size and spotty reliability, leading to the car's end, along with Ford's ownership of Jaguar by 2009. This is a story of the Jaguar X-Type. This is my old car. This is my first episode for a Jaguar model. And for those of you watching who can clearly tell by my voice that I'm American, you may be surprised at how I am pronouncing this British automaker's name. Admittedly, for most of my life, I pronounce it as Jaguar. But then I discovered the BBC show Top Gear. And when I heard them say it, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, not that. We begin with Jaguar. Yeah, like that. It just sounded more appropriate to say Jaguar. And maybe that makes me sound a bit snobbish, but like it or not, that is the image this automaker has often portrayed. The idea of Jaguar offering an entry-level luxury model likely came as a surprise to many potential buyers when the X-Type was first introduced in 2001. Although Ford had a majority interest in Jaguar since 1989, it wasn't until 1999 that Jaguar, along with Volvo and Aston Martin, were brought together along with Ford's longtime division Lincoln to become the premier automotive group, or PAG. Land Rover also joined the PAG in 2000. Although one of the goals of the PAG was to help bring more prestige to the Ford Motor Company, the addition of these foreign automakers to the Ford portfolio also needed to make a profit, something that Jaguar struggled to do prior to Ford's acquisition in 1989. Jaguar was part of the British Motor Corporation in 1965, and in 1968 merged with Leyland Motor, which also owned Rover. Jaguar split off on their own in 1984, where they continued to build classics like the XJ6 and 12 sedans, and the XJS Coupe. In November of 1989, Ford made offers to Jaguar's U.S. and U.K. shareholders to buy their shares, beginning a partnership that would eventually lead to two new models that were a shared design between Ford and Jaguar. The first of these two cars was the S-Type, launched in 1999 at the start of the Premier Automotive Group. Although the name S-Type had last been used on Jaguars from the 1960s, this new car was developed jointly between Ford and Jaguar as the DEW platform and was known at Jaguar as the X200. And the seats are swathed in lovely leather, very aromatic and very, <laughs> very creaky. It would also underpin the Lincoln LS and the final retro-themed generation of the Ford Thunderbird. The S-Type was a moderate success in its first year, selling over 53,000 units, although those sales led to significant decreases for the older XK and XJ models, as their potential buyers shifted to the S-Type. Still, the S-Type ushered in a new era for Jaguar, that of being a high-volume automaker. Jaguar followed up the successful S-Type with its new X-Type in 2001. Like the S-Type, the X-Type would share some design with Ford, whereas the S-Type's DEW platform was jointly developed between Ford and Jaguar from its start. The X-Type took a different approach by starting with an existing Ford platform, the CD132, which underpinned the Mark III generation of the Ford Mondeo and would be known to Jaguar as the X400. The Mondeo was a popular model in Europe, especially in Britain, but was never considered a competitor in the luxury market. Why do we buy anything else? However, it had the correct proportions to be reimagined as a compact luxury car. That market had been dominated by BMW, Mercedes, and Audi. Cadillac did make an attempt to compete with this German design Katerra, but it was gone before the X-Type even started. After you're done with this episode, check out my Katerra episode to learn more. One of the main goals of Ford with their purchase of Jaguar was to get the British Mark's volume more in line with its German competitors, and it is safe to say that without Ford behind it, it is unlikely Jaguar would ever have been able to market and sell anything that could rival a 3 Series or a C-Class in terms of volume. But Ford also knew that if they simply rebadged the Mondeo as a Jaguar, it would never be taken seriously, and would severely tarnish the Jaguar name and legacy. As a result, although the Mondeo CD132 platform was the starting point, which itself was being reworked for its second generation in 2000. The X-Type, with a different wheelbase, length, width, track, and body styling, would ultimately only share just 19% of its parts and design with the Mondeo. 
The X-Type utilized the most computer-aided engineering for any Jaguar up to that point, and its subframe was so well engineered, it earned a four-star crash rating. Even its airbags were programmed to adjust the force of their deployment based on the weight of the occupant. Commonplace today, but not so much back then. Adding to the investment was around 450 million US dollars spent by Ford to renovate their Halewood assembly plant near Liverpool to build the X-Type. Another key difference between the Mondeo and X-Type was in the drivetrain. Whereas the second generation Mondeo was only available in front wheel drive, the X-Type, at least upon its initial release, was only available with all wheel drive. It also only offered one of two different V6 gasoline engines, followed a year later with a front-wheel drive 2.1 liter V6, which differed from its rivals, who instead offered four-cylinder engines and also with diesels. The smaller displacements were an attempt to improve fuel economy, but instead were considered worse by some, as the lower displacement options provided little advantage in fuel economy when compared to the loss in power. In the U.S., where the typical X-Type owner was probably more interested in how good they looked driving a Jag, Many potential European buyers were turned away by the lack of a four-cylinder or diesel engine option. From a technical standpoint, the interior of the X-Type may look a bit primitive today. However, it was considerably high-tech and luxurious 20 years ago. This sat-nav with its touchscreen operation is gorgeous! The X-Type had impressive features for any Jaguar at the time, such as xenon headlamps, a heated windshield, and heated memory seats. Some features were even more advanced than the higher-priced S-Type. All the interior wood was genuine and manufactured alongside the wood veneers for the rest of Jaguar's lineup. So despite the X-Type intending to be the most affordable model, production costs remain high to maintain a common standard across the entire Jaguar line. Ford also wanted to stress that this new Jaguar was intended for a younger and hipper crowd than the typical Jaguar showroom would have attracted in the past. Probably their best known advertising utilized music from Chris Isaac. The song used wasn't simply an ad jingle, but instead one of his biggest hits at the time. So for obvious reasons, I can't play much of it here. What a thing to do. Other X-Type ads stress the importance of the car's then standard all-wheel drive. Just stay in its tracks. Although the X-Type's target buyer was younger than a typical Jaguar buyer, the X-Type was considered more of a luxury cruiser than a sports car which disappointed some of its younger buyers that were hoping for more of a driver's car, like the rival BMW 3 Series. Ford was betting on the X-Type meeting a sales goal of 100,000 per year, which was way beyond the sales numbers Jaguar had ever seen for any previous model. Its combined sales across the US and Europe, 2001 reached around 27,000. 2002 was a significant improvement with sales of around 64,000, but still well short of target. As a result, by 2003, the X-Type offered a two liter turbocharged four cylinder diesel, but it could only be had with front wheel drive and a manual transmission. By 2004, the X-Type was also offered as an estate model, the first estate for any Jaguar model up to that point. The estate, or sport wagon as it was called in the US, only shared the bodywork of its sedan or saloon counterpart from the windshield forward, and even had a tailgate where the glass could be opened independently. Despite these new additions, sales dropped by over 10,000 for 2003. However, the X-Type was still Jaguar's best-selling model. Some of the sales drop could also have been simply due to the X-Type maybe looking a bit too much like an old-style Jaguar. The expansive wood dash tended to look out of place for the new millennium, and the retro-looking headlamp design wasn't that desirable for the younger clientele they were trying to sell to. There was also a higher performance version, called the X-Type R, being considered which would have had a supercharger added to the 3.0-liter V6, making 300 horsepower. There was even a racing version added to the concept, but sadly, neither made it beyond the concept stage, likely because the current production X-Type wasn't dominating the marketplace. It also didn't help that the X-Type's reputation among automotive enthusiasts was being hurt by the constant reminders that it was originally based on the Ford Mondeo. Despite the previously mentioned fact that it only maintained 19% of the Ford's design and parts, Critics would continue to call it simply a reshelled Mondeo. With the X-Type sales sliding each year, planning for its replacement started by the mid-2000s to be an all-new design, completely scrapping any plans to share a future Mondeo or any other Ford platform. In fact, Ford began to backtrack on their original plan to make Jaguar a more mainstream luxury brand. Faster! Instead, move it back towards its more prestigious, lower volume automaker past. The X-Type wasn't entirely left behind as there was a more sporty Spirit Limited model in 2004. There was a facelift done for 2007, however few American buyers likely ever saw it, as the X-Type officially withdrew from the US market that year. 
leaving only around 3,500 remaining new models sold between 2007 and 2009. By 2008, like its crosstown rivals General Motors and Chrysler, Ford was at risk of declaring bankruptcy. However, unlike GM and Chrysler, Ford avoided bankruptcy, having to unload all the import Premier Automotive Group brands under then-CEO Alan Mulally. On June 2, 2008, Jaguar, along with Land Rover, were sold by Ford to Indian automaker Tata Motors for 1.7 billion pounds. They were now officially renamed Jaguar Land Rover Limited as a British registered subsidiary of Tata Motors. The end of the X-Type followed shortly thereafter, with the final model built on December 18, 2009. I will admit that I held little regard for the X-Type when I learned that it was based on a Ford model. I once had a co-worker who had recently bought an X-Type, and she was so thrilled to have it be the first Jaguar she ever owned. So when I asked her if she knew what it was, at least in my understanding at the time, a rebadged Ford, she was devastated. There's something for me with the rather annoying social climate about a small, cheap Jaguar. I have since learned, as I noted earlier, that the X-Type was far from a rebadged Ford. But like many others back then, I bought into the hype that it was. The fact that it included Ford parts shouldn't really have mattered, as Jeremy Clarkson here once noted. Genetically, you are 98% identical to a halibut, but it's the 2% that makes the difference. Jaguar as a company is still with us today, albeit being Indian owned, but it will likely never again be the volume leader that Ford once envisioned it could be. But maybe that is for the best. Because otherwise, seeing that you own a yeah. <laughs> just wouldn't be the same. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid 2000s that you rarely see today and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time.